Okay, there aren't uh, enough paint. I've got that. Uh, don't need any glue. Uh, now, I wonder if I've got another kit. Would you spot that? Or should I? Oh, hi everyone! Ted here from eModels. Uh, welcome uh, to part 5 of the Typhoon build. Uh, I'll be with you in just a moment. Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Ted here from eModels.co.uk and this is part 5 of the Typhoon build. Uh, yeah, we've moved on. We've got the engine all completed now and in this part we're going to look at putting uh, the gun bays in, so moving ourselves on from engine fitters to uh, armourers. Um, as you see, I've done a little bit since the last video, not a lot really, just to uh, get the lower half of the wings on. Um, they went on quite simply, just uh, a matter of fitting them in. Uh, also that what went on as well, if I can find my um, pointy stick, is uh, I put some, uh, I think these are uh, aircraft recognition lights in, see them just down in here. Um, what it says in the instructions is to give them a coat of um, Humbrol 60 Scarlet. Uh, however, what I've done, if I can find it somewhere, is I just give them a coat of the Humbrol Clear. I think it gives it a little bit more of a, a crystal look um, and looking from underneath uh, they look uh, quite good. We'll have a look at that in a minute. But what you need to do for the lower part of the wing is follow the instructions and choose which version you're using and then you need to get um, a small drill and drill out the appropriate holes in the wing uh, which you're going to use, whether that be for bombs, rockets or the uh, drop fuel tanks, whichever you want. And also there's a spot as well if you've put um, a motor in the engine uh, to feed the cables out through the bottom of the fuselage um, and into a stand. Um, right, what they also what needs drilling out is the holes for these um, identification lights here. Now I didn't quite have a drill big enough for that so what I did I took the drill, the biggest drill I had nearest to the size and then I just use a small round needle file to file them out. Now a tip for you from when you've done that is that when you've drilled them out underneath here before you put the, the lenses in you'll see that where you've cut the plastic there'll be a plastic coloured hole. Now I've taken some of the final colour coloured in the, the ring around where you file it out and then just uh, just a touch around the edge of the opening I've just finished off with a touch of the um, finished coat uh, I think it's mid grey or something like that I can't quite remember at the moment uh, but that will ease when it comes to masking off it means you can be a bit a little bit more um, uh, put a little bit more masking fluid on uh, and you don't have to be so accurate with it to, to, to mask the lenses off so that at least we've got some colour in those parts. Alright so what are we going to do in the next part? Well you can see that I've also put um, some of the side panels in here. Uh, these have gone in um, and that's really all I've done. Um, as I say there's uh, a, what 145 parts in that now, 27 decals. Uh, so there's quite a kit in itself already there. Right, let's get some of these other parts on so we can take her off her stands, her high-tech stands. Uh, and we need to follow the plans. These have test fitted them. Uh, they've all gone together really easily, They're just clicking into place really. Um, and as you see, what I have done is per what I like to do. I'm quite old school and I do like to remove some of the paint where the parts are going to be glued in. Um, so I think we'll start on one, we'll do one side at a time, starting on the port uh, starboard side, that's the starboard side. Uh, we'll start there, so we'll look at what we need. Uh, there's a few bits of framing parts to go in first, um, number 36, that's that one, and that will sit in here the right way up. Try everything first, make sure it all fits in. 
he says. No, I've got the wrong one, have I? It says 36. Oh, I've got the right part, I just got it upside down. Uh, going in. I know why I've got it wrong, it's because I'm looking at the wrong instructions for the wrong side. Never mind, that's uh, here to test us, but we'll still start on that side, so that's where it goes in. It is actually part then, this is actually part 37. So it goes in and it will click and sit. Make sure it's sat down and follows the base, the bit with a pointy stick, the base in there follows the contour and sits nicely on the on the wing panel. Um, just when you take them off the sprue, make sure you clean them up. Take uh, the flash and the plastic off, uh, and then we can just a bit of capillary action because we've cleaned the paint off. Is just run some glue in there, and this will start adding the strength to the wings. We'll do one side and then uh, we'll change scene while I do the other side. I'm sure you don't want to watch me do two identical sides. Have I got that in the right place? Yep. That's that one done. Uh, so now we need part 24 as we're working on the starboard side which clips on there like that and into there going in once again make sure it sits down onto the contour of the wing I think this one, uh, just because of its position where it's at, will be actually bridging the next part of the wing to go on. So make sure they're straight. Um, what's needed is all that. Just checking that that's going on straight in there. Now the next part is one of these. There's a small, looks like a leather pouch, just to go in there, just to make sure you colour that in and also there's a small decal to go on that, um, if you find that on your instructions, tell you what to go in. And there's actually two parts to this, I've built this up earlier so we can get it all in without wasting too much time. And there's one of these that goes that way, and I've got the wrong one again, and that one goes in there. Now then, these will all slot together and push down in there like that. Just make sure you clean it all up. And all the contact points have been have had the paint removed, and there it sits down nicely. Now I did notice in here, just right at the the back of that, there's a small lug that needs to you make need to make sure that it it stays flush with that airframe piece there along there, because I'm sure I would bet that when it comes to adding the top of the wing if it's not flush we're going to have to end up doing some uh, filing and adapting uh, but if you get it right now right, that sounds like it's all clicked in now as I say most of this clip most of this kit does seem to fall together Uh, certainly if we run out of glue it will probably hold itself together anyway. Just adding the glue on here. I 
and that really once it all gets together and sets will really firm this wing up it's not that it's uh, flexible anyway but uh, it will certainly add to its strength right we need to let that that side set I'll get on and do the other side um, and then we'll move on and have a look at fitting out the gun bays now um, what you can do in preparation for that uh, while you're letting this all glue off. I'm going to do some more chipping uh, on the framework that goes into the gun bays and that's these find them here uh, that's pieces um, 88 and 89 on sprue F. Now I've give these at the moment a coat of uh, dark brown it's actually uh, RC14 which is um, Pullman Umber Brown uh, it's just what I had handy in the box really. I didn't want them to be look rusty because I don't believe that airframes that are getting maintained would be rusty but yes they would get chipped. Um, so I painted them with that uh, and then they will get a coat of varnish uh, and as you know with the hairspray chipping uh, then a couple of coats of hairspray and then the top coat which in this case will be Humbrol 81 pale yellow uh, and then once that's done um, we can get them in and see where the wear and tear will take place because it wouldn't need to be all over uh, just on the edges of the framework so and then we'll chip it all off so I'll go off and get that done uh, and then when we come back we'll look at getting these bits into the gun bay and then uh, building the guns all right we'll see you in a moment right since the last scene um been really been a, a bit productive I thought rather than me stick the wing spars on then come back to you and explain that I was going to then go and fit the gun bays in I thought what I would do is I uh, go ahead and put the gun bays in um, I certainly well I've done it on one side anyway and I'm pretty glad I did really because it has been um, a little bit of a fiddle just to get them all in um, and get them seated properly um, we can have a look at that in a minute but as I explained before what we did with the framework first if I can find my pointy stick again use me use the big pointy stick um, in here let's just zoom it in a little bit for you what we've got let's just move it over into vision what we've done is put the framework in um, as I as I said before I give it a coat of dark brown first and then the pale yellow uh, and then I did the chipping effect prior to the pale yellow the hairspray went on and I've done the pale yellow inside which gives the framework a bit of wear and tear just to give it a bit more uh, more life um, then I've done the same with the guns uh, cut them off the sprues make sure you cut the right ones off they are left and right handed um, I think this where's it gone this little bit here is maybe a, a cocking handle or something like that um, and they go uh, they are left and right handed the, the, the guns themselves um, the same with the ammunition boxes the left and right handed as well so just make sure if you if you cut them off um, and put them all together that you don't mix the pairs up left and right uh, port and starboard. Uh, I did find that as well when I fit the guns I'll turn it around so you can see what I've done on the other side um, you'll find here that I put the guns in I put it all together I'm quite glad there's two sides to this because I can have a go and find out how it all goes together rather than you sit watching me struggle as um, bits and pieces don't go together properly. Uh, the the guns themselves, um, the openings in the wing spars, I actually needed to open them out a little bit just to get the guns to go through the wing uh, a lot easier. And also the the framework themselves uh, was a little bit tight and had to be trimmed to fit. Uh, now. I don't know whether that's me, whether I done something wrong, but I double checked all the um, instructions uh, going back uh, because everything's really gone together quite well with this so far. Uh, and these were these yellow airframes that you see in here were just a little bit tight to get in, but just a little bit of uh, trimming, uh, and they went in as well. Um, you'll see I painted it brown 
which does seem to be a bit of a strange um, colour combination for an aircraft. It's painted in number 62, Humbrol 62, which is leather. Uh, I had questioned this on the internet and I'd got a reply that uh, the leather, uh, the gun bays were, were, were actually apparently coated in leather to uh, reduce uh, the vibrations. Whether that's right or wrong, but uh, it apparently is the right colour. Um, the ammunition boxes, the ammunition themselves, uh, these bits obviously. Uh, I'll explain how we'll do them as we go along in a moment and how to uh, to paint your, your, your rounds, your, your bullets in, in the casings. Uh, right, let's have a look. I think we can leave it zoomed in. Yeah, I think it's there and in focus. Um, the guns. To get the guns in, I needed to open the openings through here uh, with a round file. Didn't need much, uh, but without it, the guns won't go through. Uh, they just slide through and then they sit. Uh, let's take that one back out again, if we can get it back out. They sit on uh, a raised uh, locating lug there, <coughs> which goes, <coughs> excuse me, which goes into uh, a groove underneath the gun, which would be about where the breech would be. And they also line up with the holes in the wings, these holes, if you wonder what they were for, they would be allowed to allow the, the spent rounds and the, uh, the the belt clips to fall free of the wings as the gun was being fired. So that one slides in there and the cocking handle goes forward. There's a, a square, if you look on the instructions it'll show you, but the cocking, well I'm taking it's the cocking handle, it goes forward of that raised post. If I just find my tweezers to do it with, here we go. It goes forward of that raised post and it sits in there like that. And then onto you have to excuse me if I got a shot, then onto that lug in there. Okay, that's that gun in. I haven't painted all the barrel by the way because we're not going to see that. Um, it's going to be covered by a, a shroud so I've just painted the front of the gun and the rear of the breech area. Uh, and I've also um, gone over it with some dry brushing to bring out sort of a metallic effect of wear and tear on the gun itself. Once again adding an extra dimension to it. Um, then the breech, uh, the belt feed mechanism which sits onto the gun on top there like that and then there's two sizes of there's two sizes of ammunition box uh, the smaller one goes on this side and will sit in there and then from there they're still on the sprue at the moment but the uh, the ammunition uh, will sit in there. Right, how do we do the ammunition? Well, uh, I've got it like this uh, by a series of processes, uh, just a simple paint process, uh, and it goes like this. First of all, we colour the whole thing in black. Then, after that, uh, I've gone across and used a gold paint. In this case, I've used gold because I think actually brass is um, a little bit too bright. It's too brassy. Uh, so I've given it a dry brush it with a gold, well, in my case, dry brush it with gold paint. Let that dry and then what we need to do now, if you look closely at the rounds themselves, the bullets themselves, you'll see a, a line where the shell casing meets the actual bullet itself. That needs masking off and then 
coat the top, the bullets themselves, in copper. Right, then you let that dry and then if you look again closely you'll see uh, you'll see here there's a belt clip so what we need to do is mask again the top above and below the belt clip and then paint it black once it's all done um, it can be it's done uh, just dry brush uh, just dry brushing the the black background gives a bit of definition and gives the impression of the separate bullets rather than looking in one mass and I, I thought that uh, doing it with a dry brush technique if you do it across the rounds across the bullets uh, it bring it brings out all the raised highlights and really gives a good effect to the to the round. All right, okay. Uh, I'll go now and fit the fitting it back in. Fit the second gun to this. Uh, it'll go in just the same. Uh, just pushing it through. Get it, if we get to make sure it's not upside down first. Push it through, get it in, and then we'll make sure that it fits across there, sits on that lug, and we can glue those in. Uh, once again, the ammunition box will go in there, and then, oops, sorry, I forgot the next bit, the belt feed mechanism. We'll go in there like that. The round of bullets, let's cut these off the screw and I'll show you. Just take the raised bit off. Okay, the rounds themselves will actually just sit in there and the lip you'll see the in the bullets themselves there's a small lip that actually fits into the belt feed mechanism itself so it sits in the box and the rounds then fit feeding feeding the gun simple well once it is once it's glued uh, Right, I'll go off and get these done. I'll take another break. Um, what we've got left to go in this bit here is the fuel can. I built the fuel can. Uh, that will sit in there like that. Um, really, the fuel can, you can paint it, you can put it in, you can leave it out because once the wings go over the top, you won't actually see it. Uh, but uh, you'll know it's there. You can tell everybody it's there. Um, and we'll get the next stage done. Right, I'll go off and glue all this together and bring it back into shot. And then we'll have a look at uh, giving these gun bays um, a bit of weathering and we can start and then close it all up, put the top part of the wings on. We're, we're really getting there. Um, yeah, we're moving on. Right, we'll go and get this done and I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay, all glued. Um, bit of weather. Um, what I've done with this is, where's my bottle at? I'll show you it again if you haven't seen it already. It's just the one we've used right the way through, which is the Humbrol enamel wash. Um, dead easy to use. Um, I've actually mixed this this time with a small amount of the Humbrol dust. Uh, that's that one. Uh, really, it, n not much, just to lighten, rather than give it black, um, let's uh, rather than give it a just totally black wash, I, I, I lightened it up with the with the dust wash, which made it more of a grey. Let's zoom it in, see if you could see this a little bit better uh, when it comes back into focus. There we go. I move that over. 
you can see in the gun bays what we've done there is given them um, a, a, a dirty wash. Uh, now I've ex some experience of firearms myself and I know that uh, after the guns have been fired for a while it becomes a, you, you get a, a an oily sort of dirty grime uh, that's a mixture of the cordite, uh, the explosives powder uh, and the fumes coming off it and I would have thought that two uh, large Hispano cannons in a confined space such as a gun bay like this um, would have rendered the whole area rather dirty and grimy um, so I've depicted that as such. Um, I'm sure that the, the armourers, the guys that maintain the weapons would have had the weapons themselves immaculate and they would have been cleaned uh, um, and, and oiled uh, and kept in good working order uh, but I would, have th I would expect that the general area would be quite uh, dirty and grubby. Another thing while we zoomed in, I uh, also got fitted here. Where's my pointy stick? I need a pointy stick for this. Under the, these here are the forward wi uh, wing tanks. Another one on that side. Uh, they just glue in. Uh, I haven't done any weathering on them uh, because they'll be... Oh, let's get there we are, back in the shot so you can see what I'm talking about. I haven't done any weathering on them just yet because I'll do that uh, when we come down and do the uh, undercarriage uh, and all the wheel wells and things like that. I have given the wing tanks themselves, the, the big square um, rectangular tanks, I've given them a little bit of a, a black weathering but really doesn't need much because we're not going to see them. You'll know it's there, you know it's done. Uh, you can take some photographs and impress your friends if you wanted to. Uh, and that's what we've done. Uh, what we're going to do now is fit the tops of this area. Let's zoom it back out so you can see what we're talking about. There we are, that's a bit better. Uh, we're going to fit the tops of these. Now, I've built these up. Um, there's some ribs to fit in them. Uh, they go together quite easily. Um, and they just fit and seal the tops of the wheel wells, the wheel bays. Uh, really they, they clip in more or less uh, but um, as we need to we'll put some glue on them uh, and get them in um, not much just clean the tags up where the glue is going to go uh, clean the locating uh, recesses as well and put some glue in and then just clip them in. You can hear them click as they go in. Well, certainly they did before. There we go. Clicking them in. If you can see that, see what's happening. And same for the other side. want to clip in now and we'll sort that in a moment. Just a bit more glue on this side. Just on the locating tags. goes in. Really, more or less, as we've done this, it brings this section to a bit of an end really. Um, quite a lot of the big work's done now. Uh, I think what we need the next sort of extended bit as such will be the wheel bays. There's a bit of detail to go in those. Um, and after that we're really we'll be about done. Uh, just one word I did forget to mention when we were putting the cannons in about building uh, about drilling the ends of the cannons it says in the instructions to give them a 0.9 millimeter hole in the end if you have a set of micro drills such as these they're ideal 
Um, if not, um, I know that some model railway shops uh, do sell, or some hobby shops, they do sell individual um, drills themselves, so you wouldn't need to go out and buy a full set. Um, they're always handy to have in. What I did though was um, I took a drill much smaller than the required one uh, and drilled it out maybe about half the size first. You don't have to drill all the way down, just uh, a few millimetres in just to give it the impression of being open. It, can't, it doesn't really come out, uh, you can't really see it on the video but it is there. I've drilled them out. Drill it small first and then use the 0.9 mil in a drill vise, in a pin vise, um, to drill them out to the right size. Um, and then you it's done. Uh, the guns can go in. Um, right, so where are we now? That's them done. What we're going to look at next, uh, or what I'll carry on and do after I leave you, is I'll put the wing tips on. Uh, put those into there like that and there's a one or two bits to to go in there as well um, and some more framework just to sit here on the front uh, but I'll get on and do with that um, I think that's going to be about it for this video uh, we've not it's not taken as long to get this one done as the last video because uh, things have gone together there's, n there's not been that great detail in it um, but next time, they are just having a look, let's have a look at the instructions. Yeah, we'll lead on from about section. Um, yeah, what, what's what we're going to do? One, three, six. Where well, the sections go on like that, uh, the, the tops of the wings. What I'll probably do is while you're away and I'm preparing the next video, I'll get the first half, one half done, and see how it goes together, and then we'll come back and have a look together putting the, the wings on the other side. Um, so I'll go and get that done. Anyway, I think that'll be the end for this section and this video, but thanks again for looking in. Um, don't forget, anything you need, any questions, post them at the bottom of the video or on the eModels web uh, Facebook page. Um, so it's ted at eModels.co.uk. Thanking you once again for watching. Um, I'll go on and get a few more bits of this done and we'll come back for the next video and we'll put a few more parts together. Uh, but thanks for looking in and I'll see you all again. Bye now.